everyone. So today I thought I'd do a really simple how to make a pleated skirt. Now this is really fun to do at home and um, you can make uh, whatever version of it you like. Today's version is going to be slightly more summery, lighter materials, really simple. Since it won't have lining or anything, um, it will help to keep it straightforward but it also means that it's ideal for while the weather is getting warmer. So I'm going to talk you through step by step the things that you need. I am going to use a sewing machine today because I am lucky enough to have one that my grand aunt sent me, a really nice Singer sewing machine. And um, But you can just use a needle and thread if that's what you have. This doesn't have to be expensive. I'm going to be using leftover material I have. Um, it was a bed sheet and I originally changed part of it into a dress for my sister as a birthday present. So it's just some leftover scraps I have and I'm going to talk you through step by step this really easy way to make a nice little pleated summer skirt. Okay, so here's the main things that you're going to need today. You're going to need the material that you've decided to use. Now I've gone with this pretty little floral one. And Miss Cotton, it, as I said, it was a bed sheet, bed spread. So I know it's going to wash well. It's easy to work with. It's easy to iron. Next thing you'll need is a fabric scissors. Now you can get these in lots of places and they can be expensive. I actually just got mine in Tiger. It was five pound. Um, really good quality, great for cutting material. Don't use it to cut anything else because it will just blunt it. Next thing that you're gonna need is a measuring tape because you're gonna have to take a couple of measurements that we'll go through in a minute. And then after that, you're gonna need your thread. So whatever color you feel best matches up with your material I mean it can be anything doesn't even have to match it depends on what you're going for you're going to need some needles to sew it up or um, a sewing machine and you're going to need some pins because you're going to have to you know pin what you measure and all the rest um, and then the last thing that you're going to need today is some tailor's chalk now if you don't have tailor's chalk just use normal chalk or you can even use pencil but it does mean that you're going to have to um wash it before you wear it if you use something that's not chalk i like the chalk because i can use damp cloth or a baby wipe just to sort of rub it off the material before i want to wear it now the last thing that you're going to need it can go two ways you're either going to need a zip um, and these aren't that expensive from fabric shops it doesn't need to be that big um usually a sort of 12 inch zip is going to be big enough and if you don't want to use a zip, then you can use some elastic in the waist instead and fully sew it up. So I'll talk you through the two options. So now I'm going to talk you through measuring up for your skirt. So what you're going to need for that is your measuring tape. Um, almost everybody does have measuring tape at home. If you didn't, you could always use sort of paper or a piece of string and then just mark on the string like how wide you are or the length that you want it to be. So I'll just show you how I do it. Just tilt you down a little bit. So for the purpose of the video today, I'm wearing quite a sheer sort of dress. Um, it's an oversized shirt. So I'm just going to roll up my jumper just so that you can have a better look at what I'm going to do. So you decide where you want your skirt to start. Now it can be high waisted, so then you'd measure this part of yourself. You know, you can have it around the belly button, you can have it lower down across the hips. I kind of like to have my skirt sit somewhere between my belly button and low down. I just find that to be the most flattering section of me to wear them. So you just take your measuring tape, just tuck the jumper back up, and you just basically measure. Now don't pull it across or don't suck in because all you're going to do is end up making a skirt that is too small for you. So once you've taken that measurement, write it down. Now the next thing you're going to need to do is decide how long you'd like your skirt to be. Now I am quite short and as you can see today I do prefer to wear shorter dresses, shorter skirts. I feel it lengthens my leg a little bit. But what you need to do is decide sort of where you were going to have the skirt sit and then hold the tape and then just measure down to however far you'd like your skirt to be. Now, after you've measured, say, however long you'd like it to be, maybe say 13 inches in my case, add another inch to it, in which case I would write down 14 inches. Now, this is the exact same for around the width measurement. Always add an inch on. This is going to allow for the seam allowance or the zip allowance, whatever it is you're gonna add on. So that's step one complete. So, now because I don't have a whole lot of space, I like to use this patch of ground to do my measuring 
and my laying out of material. Now, since this is a scrap, I actually do have it already folded in half, as you can see across the width of it. Now, it's not quite enough material because you're going to want to take the measurement of your waist and multiply it by three. That is what you're going to need to make your pleats. Now, I am lucky enough that this width here is actually twice. I said I was going to make it about 13 inches. Now, this piece is 28 inches, so I'm lucky enough that I can fold it over. So after I have folded it over, it looks quite small that this is going to be the length of my skirt. But when it's sitting quite low, it won't appear as small. So once I have um, folded it in half, next thing I'm going to do is take my scissors, make sure it's as best half as possible. And I'm just going to cut it down just like this, um, just so that I'm going to have more material than I actually originally did. Now I can explain this to you in a moment a little bit clearer. But basically now, this is the, the length my skirt is going to be. And I needed the width of my waist, so 33 inches. And I need to multiply that by three, which will give me 98 inches is the amount of material that I need. So now that I've sort of put these together to make it longer, what I'm going to do is with the right sides facing together, I'm going to hold that down. I'm going to pin it in place and then I'm going to sew it. So you just grab your pins. Okay. And what you're going to want to do if you're using a sewing machine is you can pin down and I'll show you a little closer in a minute. But if you put the pins so that they meet the sewing machine horizontally, you can sew over them without causing damage to your machine. So you just pin them down and then I'll show you the next step. So as you can see here, I have pinned it down. My pins, the material is quite dark so it's hard to see, but they are going to run through the machine horizontally. So the machine will hop across them this way. Okay, so basically if you're going to do it by hand, it's a simple slip stitch. Now you can find a lot of videos on YouTube about how to do a simple slip stitch. But it's basically go back and forth on the start point a few times just to create a knot. And then you literally go in and out and in and out of the material. So this is going to just be a simple slip stitch like what would happen with a sewing machine. So hopefully you can see it there. Okay, so now that you have your material in the machine, I usually just pop my machine onto an ironing board because at the moment we don't have a whole lot of space and it's an easy way to create kind of the height that I like to work at and it stores away easy plus I can use it to the ironing so it's great. So I'm just going to now sew these two pieces together and then I will begin to show you how to mark to do your pleats. So similar as to if you did it by hand, um, just go back and forth at the beginning just to make sure that it doesn't pull apart and then right at the end do a little bit back and forward again as you can see. And then remove your pins. You can either do this as you go along or like me do it at the end. Another reason I like to use the ironing board is because of the spongy top so the pins sit into it just like a pin cushion would so I don't tend to lose many of them. So now that you know you've got enough of it to go around you three times, so you can see there that's where I had to add on the extra little bit of material, but when it's pleated you won't see it anyway. So you know you can check it, measure it again, make sure that from here to the very end is you three times. Now this is obviously going to be a particularly short skirt, um, but you know it's summer and it's nice to get your legs out. You can always go as long or as short as you'd like, but after you've made that right length, 
so that you can get into it three times. The next thing that you need to measure up is the waistband. Now the waistband itself is only going to be the width that you originally measured. So whatever that was by two inches thick. So then when you're finished with it, and when you've turned it and all the rest, which I'll show you later, it won't actually be two inches thick. So you then now get your other little leftover bit of material, however much it takes. Now, you know, let's say for example, you only had a piece this big left without this bit dangling. You know, there's there's plenty there. You, you wind up your two inches however many times, uh, you know, put it into two inch sections and sew them onto each other to make it longer. So basically the next thing you need now is a waistband and that is the width that you want it to be plus an inch just to allow for sort of messing up by two inches thick. So now I'm going to measure out the skirt from my pleat. So I count in an inch from the beginning and that is just the inch I've left over and then I mark the skirt at three inch intervals. So just measure it and then mark it at three inch intervals because these are going to become your pleat. So I like to take my chalk and just sort of scribble off that first inch, just so I know that that is not counted. I then take my safety pins. And so from the first one, I count one. I hold it in my finger, not including this extra inch here. I count one, two, and then I fold it over onto the third line. Now, when you've done this, you're just gonna to wanna to pop in a pin. Then you look for your next line and you do it again. One, two, three. Lift it and fold it. Just sort of press it down along the way and then pin it in place. Now the next thing I like to do is to also just pop a pin in that sort of underneath piece where I can feel the material has been folded. And I continue. So I skip it and I become one, two, three and then I bring it across to the third line again and again the one that's just been folded I hold it there and I just pin it in place and then essentially you just continue that for the whole piece so I'll show you that so as you previously saw I have pre-marked it at three inch intervals and you just keep counting one two and three, mark the one up with the three and pin it in place. Keep going along, keep flattening it down as you go just to make sure there's no ruffles where there shouldn't be. It can be tedious and you have to go back and forth and do make sure, as I said before, put the pins so that they'll meet the machine horizontally. So after you've done all your pinning, you should already have what looks like a little pleated section. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is you can either hand sew, like I previously showed you, so just a simple slip stitch in, out, in, out, in, out, or you can run it through the sewing machine. Now, this part that you would have finished with, so the area you pleated towards, Whatever way you turned your pleats, you're now going to sew in the opposite direction. You want to sew against the pleats to make sure that they sit nicely and they don't ruffle out. So again, back and forth to begin and then just straight along. And I'm taking the pins out as I go because at this point you can lose them. Then when you reach the end, do the usual back and forth to make sure that it doesn't undo. So after you finish sewing it, you should be left with what already looks like quite a pretty pleated skirt. What you can do now is just pop it around where you plan for it to sit and just check that you've definitely given enough material to it. And we have, and that's fine. And then after that, you're gonna wanna do a little hem. So I'm gonna show you now how you can do that. You literally, what you're gonna do is, you can do this blind or you can do it which means you, you don't actually measure it or you can measure about an inch and then you fold the inch in half and fold it again then iron it so it sits nicely and then just throw either a slip stitch by hand or the sewing machine across it just to give it a nicer edge to it so now this is my waistband the piece i previously cut earlier which is just the width that i needed it plus an inch to be careful 
by two inches. So with the right sides together, fold it in half and then pin those bits in place. You can iron it, I don't tend to, but after you've done this, you can see, just stitch across that upper part. Now again, I've put my pins so that they meet the machine horizontally. This will mean that obviously your needle doesn't bash across them, it will just hop across them instead because you don't want to damage your machine. Then after you've taken out your pins, you're gonna to wanna to start the incredibly tedious task of turning it the right way. Now do be patient, and you will see in a moment, I do use the scissors just to push it through a teeny bit, but you have to be careful because if you're not careful, you're only gonna poke a hole in your band and you'll have to start again. Sometimes it helps if your hand is a little bit damp because it will grip the material as you're trying to pull it through. And generally, if your hands aren't too cold, you should be able to get a fairly good grip and then just turn it the right way round. Okay, so the next thing you're going to want to do is, um, I have ironed my waistband. And unfortunately, the camera cut off, so I didn't get to see that. But it's simple, you just literally iron it flat. Um, after this, you're going to want to take it so that you can attach it to the skirt itself. So I've laid my skirt out this way. Um, I could probably turn you just a little bit. There we are. Um, and as you can see, you're going to want the band to eventually sit up from the skirt. So for now, you're going to lay it down flat on it and pin it the whole way along the skirt. Same as I've showed you with the pinning before. Um, I like to have the skirt fully out because obviously I've made the skirt longer than it has to be. So I want to make sure that the band is right in the middle of the skirt. So. I've lined it up, it's got its um, hanging off inch up that side and now that I've got it down I'm going to take my pins and pin it in place. Do take your time with this and you can always sort of line it up and if a bit is hanging too much from one side then just unpin it and start again because this is really what's going to give it its finishing touch and kind of make the skirt look that little bit neater. Be patient. Now that you have pinned it in place, the next thing you're going to need to do is to sew it on. Again, if you're doing it by hand, it's the simple slip stitch um, and with the machine, it's just the same as you've been doing the whole way along. So my tension on my machine is at a three, that tends to be enough for me. Just raise the needle up, put your material in and get sewing. Now, since you're nearing the final steps, you want to run your hands across it several times and make sure that you haven't left any pins in place. So I haven't unpinned it as I was sewing, I just put them through the machine and I'm removing them now. Um, I always, at the end of every step, give the material a good feel because the last thing you don't want to do is to sew needles into the material and not find out they're there until you put it on because obviously that's quite painful. So just always make sure that you've removed them all. After you've removed them from that step, just lift it up and make sure that you haven't missed any areas. It is possible with the sewing machine that you've sort of sewed too close. Now once you've done this, you have your waistband on. Now, to make sure that the waistband stays up when you wear it and doesn't try to pop down, you can then flatten it out with an iron and then it's called digging in the ditch. So you go right into the centre fold, do a close up for you, but right into the centre fold here where you've sewed the two pieces together and um, that will make the band stand up instead of curling over. Now that you've made it that far, you've done your digging in the ditch so that your band stands up rather than curling over, you now are going to deal with this one little inch of extra material that's sticking out. And for that, you're going to take it, fold it in by about a half an inch hem, as we can see here. It's quite simply a really teeny, teeny little bit. So that's how you're going to get rid of that extra inch. 
and then just do a simple slip stitch down the side so same way i showed you with the band just do some pins across this to hold it in place or you can give it a quick iron and then just stitch it down into place and then we're almost done so i've decided to keep this final step as easy as possible and instead of trying to add in a zip we're going to use some velcro so this will make it easy to get it nice and neat um and you know it, it will make it quicker you won't have to worry about trying to make it a hidden zipper so i'll show you now how you're going to do that so first of all pin your little piece of velcro down i've measured six inches that tends to be enough and then do the same again i folded in all that excess material i know i won't need i sort of overdid it rather than an inch i just had a little bit extra wasn't really planned but hey ho just pin your piece of velcro exactly where you need it to sit so after you've sewn on your velcro and make sure that you sew all four edges so i've sewed one there and as you can see, I folded in what was a bit of excess that I had allowed for in the width. Um, obviously, I'd allowed for less in the band. When I was doing my pleats, I allowed for, well, too much. That's why I said an inch is fine. I've just folded it over and put the other piece of Velcro on. Again, make sure that you do all four sides of the Velcro. So once you match up your Velcro, well, I've only measured six inches of Velcro because that tends to be all you need to like get into a skirt. So match the Velcro up to itself and then match the rest of the skirt up to itself. And then you're going to want to do um, close this off. So you're going to want to do the good sides together. Put your good sides together, match up the Velcro and then just throw a simple stitch, slip stitch the whole way along. And after you've done the little slip stitch to close it, you're done. So I'll give you a little look at the final product. I hope you like it. Obviously I still have my tights on, but I'll just give you an idea of what it looks like. So you can see there, it's quite cute. It's a nice length, simple to open. You know, you could, if you had made it a little bit tighter, wear it up higher, but it is the simplest, cutest little skirt. It has some pleats, as you can see. Um, obviously, if you use elastic, you can take it in more. Um, and that's it. So there it is. Style it how you like it. Take your time and enjoy it. So I hope that you enjoyed this how-to video with me today. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And um, put some suggestions down in the comment section if there's any other how-to videos you would like to see. And until next time, bye.